Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to another episode of Creators Inspire series. This is your host, Terry Shaw, and I'm truly excited to be here once again on another Sunday. I'm thankful. I hope you're thankful as well. Uh, if you're in the Northeast, we're heading into, you know, it's fall and we're heading into winter. I can already feel it. And if you are anywhere else, um, in the world, whatever season that you're welcome in. Um, thank you so much. So thank you. Um, today we'll be having a very special guest, um, Chantal Mitchell, um, who is an early childhood education teacher and um, global uh, entrepreneur and a finance educator. So Chantal will be speaking about, you know, teaching the future and teaching the future is not just about, you know, teaching younger children, whatever the curriculum is, but more beyond that, like financial liter literacy, you know, how they can maximize their potential. She's actually the co-founder of CAMPSA, which, which means Create and Maximize Potential South Africa, where they run a basketball camp. Um, I'm so excited to be a part of that. Uh, I, when she started that a couple of years ago, I was very proud to be one of the people who, you know, donated and be able to contribute scholarships to, to help these kids in South Africa. And I'm so grateful that, you know, she started that along with other colleagues of her. So um, we're going to welcome in Chantal uh, when she sends in the request to join. Chantal, if you can send in a request to join. And um, there she goes. Great. Thank you, Anthony, for joining in. Thank you. Hi, Terry. Hey. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you doing, boo? <laughs> I, I'm very wonderful. <laughs> Look at your hair. Oh, my gosh. Your hair journey is ridiculous. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> so thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule. I'm sure you're busy with a lot of things um, to, you know, to discuss about teaching the future and, you know, also discuss a little bit about yourself and your brand. And, you know, there's so many different things that you do in the world yeah. because people need to hear. <laughs> I already started talking about um, CAMP SA, which is Camp SA, and um, I know you're also doing your your vlogs, um, yes. Teacher Mom and Dad, with your partner, which is exciting and it's funny. <laughs> so, Thank you. <laughs> so I'm excited for that. So um, for everyone, please share a little bit about yourself and you know what inspires you to create, basically. Okay, so let's back all the way up. I am an immigrant. I moved here with my mom and brother when I was 12 years old. Okay. I, so I started here in New York, in Queens, New York, in middle school, then completed high school here. Then I attended Howard University where I studied health sciences with a concentration in physical therapy. I'm doing none of that now. <laughs> um, during my senior year, <laughs> I actually got a job as a teacher in Brooklyn and oh. I decided to take that. I, and now I'm still teaching. And Great. I've just been doing um, other stuff, you know, I've, I've, I know I've always been a creative, but I've never had the chance or the resources to do so, or so mm -hmm. I thought. But once I realized that, you know, there are all these resources, there's online resources. I'm... Hi, City Farm. Look who wants to oh. Oh. oh my God, another little creator in the making. <laughs> yeah. Gorgeous. Once I realized that, you know, the resources are out there and I've also yeah. been inspired by other people, I, I decided to just go ahead and just create. That's great. That's great. And so, you know, with your, you're saying you're still teaching. Now, yeah. please, I would love to hear your take on, you know, the whole virtual teaching, you know, I, I mean, most of us, we don't have any choice because of what's going on with the pandemic. But yes. as a teacher yourself, can you share your experiences, um, you know, how, to, you know, this current climate, teaching climate? Absolutely. So, <laughs> She's too cute. this is a part of it. This is a part of it. Yeah. <laughs> I get about teaching and then you have a younger one too. Wow, you're, you're resilient. Yeah. Wow. I mean, every time I get on, on Zoom, she's there. She's, she wants to say hi. She wants to say bye. 
<laughs> but a typical day looks like this. Mm -hmm. We wake up an hour before I get on Zoom. You know, I feed the baby. I change her. I take care of her. Then I get myself mm -hmm. ready. Then my students sign on around 8 o'clock. And so right away, we get into doing some morning math, some warming up our brains. And then we get into some phonics. Now, okay. a lot of my students struggle with reading. So I spend a great deal of time really focusing on letter sounds, focusing on um, the foundations of reading. And luckily, my school provides um, laptops. They provide hotspots for students. So most of my students are able to sign on and are able to wow, be present. That's great. We still, that's have, great. we still have about one or two who have okay. internet connection issues, but okay. we still get on the phone with them and we try to find a way to make it work. Okay. So in, in that aspect, we are fortunate. Mm -hmm. And then after phonics, they get about a 20 minute break. And I like to tell my students during this break, take some time to do something nice. Do something nice for the adults in your house. Nice. You know, it could, it could, it could be them doing their work, whatever they want. But I like to put that in their brain that, you know, you're also working on becoming a good person. That's so right. use these breaks, not just for academics, academics, but to also practice being a good person. Because, yeah. you know, we don't have them in front of us. So yeah, we have to just put it, put, plant the seed in their brain and then, yeah you have them use that to to make something of it and how old are the kids um that you teach i know it's early childhood so how yes. old are they my kids are in first grade they're five six and seven oh. years old oh okay yeah, so wow really young so, yeah so that's a good you know that's a good way to start exactly as you said planting seeds in their mind about you know the little time that they have to probably go say nice something nice to their parents now i've heard stories sometimes okay <laughs> i've heard stories i've seen things on the internet me too with this virtual teaching <laughs> and um it's not easy. It's not easy for the parents because parents tend to forget that their kids are actually in school. And sometimes you have parents taking kids away from, you know, while the teacher is teaching yeah. on Zoom and have them, um, you know, washing the dishes yes. or something. <laughs> so they're in the comfort of their home. Uh -huh. They're in the comfort of their home and parents still exactly. have that. They feel like exactly. they have that rain inside the house. Whereas in exactly. school, it's up to the teachers and the adults in the school building to run things. Yeah. But at home, the parents are like, listen, you still got to do what I say in this space, okay? So we do have a lot of, uh, not a lot. Sometimes parents mm -hmm. will, um, you know, call their child to do something. Or sometimes okay. they get distracted by what's going on in the environment. But That's right. we also have to understand that they're at home and other people live there. And mm -hmm. people depend on them. They depend on other people. And it's, mm -hmm. it's normal to have interactions with the people around you. So I do mm -hmm. give them that break and that flexibility to just understand that, you know what? There are other things going on in the, in the house. And yes, they do need to look away for a second. They do need to go grab something for someone who's depending yeah. on them. So that's fine. Yeah. And, and that's good that you're open to that because, you know, I hearing from other teachers, you know, sometimes it interrupts with the curriculum because it's so different when you're, you know, transitioning from an in-person where their focus is like set because they don't have anything else to do but to play right. with the kid that's next to them, right? Or, you know, stay focused. But now you have the whole family or whosoever is at home with them and they're distracted and they probably thought about, oh, I could probably go play that video game. I'm not saying your students do that. <laughs> but you too have students like, oh, uh, uh, this doesn't feel like, probably they don't even feel like school to them. It feels right. just like, I don't know, like a game. Yeah. Um, as soon as they get distracted, they just think that school is not even necessary. So how do you bring your students back to, you know, I know the, you, as you said, things will happen. They will be distracted. How do you bring them back to focus yes. on the curriculum? I will say, fortunately for me, yeah. most of the time, if not, I will say over 90% of the time, my students are engaged and are uh -huh. learning. And the bottom line is I'm teaching in a very engaging way where they want to be there. So I'm not telling them that they have to be paying attention. It's the way mm -hmm. that I'm delivering the instruction that makes them want to not miss anything. That's so true. I'm speaking very clearly to them. I'm, I'm moving them along, whether it's a storyline or, 
the way that I'm presenting the material is that they want to see what's going on. They want to know what's coming next. I'm also mm -hmm. engaging them in the conversation. And sometimes I'm letting them lead the conversation. So oh, wow. in, if I introduce something today, the next day, I know that at least two or three children know what's going on and they can explain to their friends. So they're not always mm -hmm. hearing my voice. They're talking to each other. So that socialization aspect keeps them um, interested and keeps them wanting mm -hmm. to come back. Whenever there's a break, I'm telling the kids, okay, you have a 20 minute break, do something nice and then come back at 1120. Those children will sign on at 1120. I have a few students who will sign on before that and they'll go, um, Miss Mitchell, where are you? We've been waiting. <laughs> <laughs> They're very proud. Oh, mom. That is so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> they don't want to miss anything wow that's that's good to hear you know i'm i'm glad you're coming on you know telling your story because i all i've seen is pure negativity about this whole virtual all i'm hearing is about pure negativity about this whole virtual le learning and it's good to hear a different perspective that it's not all doom and gloom you know there is interaction does you know not everyone comes in their pajamas or in bed sleeping in bed while you know <laughs> they're be dressed up as if they're in a class no. and <laughs> and I think <laughs> even if that stuff is happening you have to choose yeah. what to focus on right yeah because i can't control what a child is wearing That's i can't true. control where they're sitting but the one thing mm -hmm. that i can control as a teacher is what i'm delivering on the screen and i have to make Absolutely. it so good that they just want to tune in they're not worried about laying down and falling asleep they're not worrying about what's going on around them I have students telling their parents, shh, because they don't want to miss what's going on here. <laughs> so it's, it's about the, the, you as a teacher finding yeah. a way to be so, so engaging that students are sucked in to what you're giving them. And before you know it, they don't even realize that they're learning. That is true. That's true. And as you said, it's the way how you engage with your students and the way how you, you know, um, allow them to interact like you said right. interaction and engagement is a big thing for you now um you tell us like what are some of the things that you teach to keep that in engagement um i i don't know if you probably like in you know zoom so you can probably share your screen and yeah. share like certain things on the screen about how to do or do you have them do projects and stuff like so, that like how do you work so how do you work that out every day we have guided reading and guided yeah. reading is me guiding them through reading, <laughs> exactly yeah. what it sounds like. But yeah. there's a big focus on understanding what you're reading, right? There's a big mm -hmm. comprehension focus. Mm -hmm. So I'm presenting a book that I know those students can read. It's on their reading level. There are mm -hmm. words in there that they can figure out, right? So now they have access to the story. And I'm choosing mm -hmm. very interesting stories that I know is going to capture them, things that they can relate to. Okay. So that's the first part of, of capturing their attention. The second part is, after reading together, I have them read. I'm not reading, they're seldomly hearing my voice. After they read the entire text, I'm now asking them comprehension questions about what happened in the story. Mm -hmm. And they get to listen to each other, agree or disagree with each other. They get to discuss why uh, someone's answer is incorrect or why it is correct. Then they get to help their friends. Like, this is what you can do to actually find the correct answer. Yeah. So it's, it's so um, interactive that they, they're the ones who are leading the conversation. They feel ownership of what they're doing. They feel like they're the ones teaching the rest of the class what to do. And so I, I love guided reading for that reason, because it gives them the opportunity to not only be a student, but to also be a teacher to their peers. Wow, that's, that's different. You bring your own spin, spin to it, which is great. And, you know, um, Thank you so much for sharing that because, Absolutely. you know, when from the, you know, from the outside looking in, you would think it's a kind of set tone. And I guess everybody do have control of how you deliver whatever curriculum is given to you, to the students and how you have them interact with that. So thank you for sharing that. Absolutely. Now, um, I recall you mentioned that you also have them showing like financial literacy, like, um, Yes. Can you share a little bit about how you have your students engage in financial literacy, like online businesses and whatnot? Yes. I think that's exciting. <laughs> so at the end of the last school year, so the pandemic yeah. started in around March is when we got out of school. Right? Yeah. So we started this remote learning back in March. And at that point, this was all new. 
getting the computers, getting on Zoom, all this was new. So out of my, what, 15 students, four, only four will show up consistently. So mm. I thought to myself, okay, I'm not reaching the entire class academically because of technology issues that are happening. Mm -hmm. So what am I going to do with these four or five students who do sign on every day? And these are the four or five students who are, are on grade level with their reading. Mm -hmm. that's, maybe that's why they're able to figure out the technology and get on on their own. Mm -hmm. So these are the students who are with it. And so I'm thinking, okay, what can I do? Thinking about what's happening in society right now. How can I do my part in getting these students to change the narrative moving forward? And I thought, well, the, one of the biggest problems with our community is that we don't know how to manage money and we don't know how to build wealth. And so mm -hmm. and I, I feel like I'm just learning that stuff in my 20s. What if, mm -hmm. what if they started at six years old? I mean, how different could their life look? Exactly. And so exactly. I took, and they're, right. they're, they're quick learners too, you know? Exactly. They're quick. They don't have the anxiety issues like we do when they're older when we're trying to spend money and take risks and all these different exactly. things. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I, um, I took the math block. It was like what I'm teaching them, they already know. So I yeah. took that math block to infuse financial education. The first thing I did was teach them what money is. Money is a resource that you use to, to trade for goods, right? Mm -hmm. When you want something, people like money. You give it to them so you can get something else from them. That's how I put it to them, plain and simple. So if you, need, if you want things in the world, you're going to need money. Yeah, so exactly. How can you get money? And they're like, I don't know. You go to the bank, you go to the ATM. No, <laughs> there's money in there, but that's not how it comes. You have to actually create systems where yeah. money is coming into you systematically. It's coming in and you're spending it wisely. But the point is to have more money than you spend. All right. So I'm teaching them that and they're, they're grasping it. And by the end of, by the end of the school year, which was in June, I had all six students create a business plan very kid friendly very straightforward that they can understand they're the ones telling me what to do and i'm just formatting the business plan for them i'm just yeah. writing down what they told me in, in organized boxes and then i send it to them and their parents i had one girl starting a ribbon and bow business nice we were on amazon looking at the cost of ribbons and bows she was like okay if i if i buy it for three dollars a pack and i can sell them for five dollars each then we calculated the profit she's making on each bow. <laughs> I'm like, but then we ran into a problem. I asked them, well, where are you going to get the money from to buy the, the materials in the first place? Like, you don't even yeah. have $3 to go buy these bows. So where are you going to get that from? They're like, okay, we can ask our mom. If your mom doesn't have it, who else can you ask? So they're writing down names of people they can ask for money. Yeah. Then I'm telling them, okay, if you want people to give you money, you have to give them some type of incentive. Exactly. I, right. So then I tell, <laughs> teach them about what incentive. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I hope I get really deep into this. Did you, did right. you what is that? <laughs> so I'm like, you, you want me to give you my money? What are you going to give me? Yeah, exactly. So I'll let them know that, well, people like money. So <laughs> if, if, if your mom's going to give you $35, you tell her, when I make back my money, I'll give you back 40 So you mm. get an extra five on top of it. So mm -hmm. then, I, yeah, that's doable. I, I could give her an extra five. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm having students asking their families, and I also give them a deadline. Listen, you have one week yeah. to get the money you need. So mm -hmm. in, in that whole week, their homework is to go out and ask people for money. And mm -hmm. as, as business owners now, as adults, these are things that we have to do to, to um, exactly. get money and get capital. Yeah. I mean, wealth starts from loans. It's the truth. And how you turn over those loans is, you know, is how you create wealth. And that's how right. it works. Yeah. And so I, it was really good to see that they understand that yeah. at six years old. Like, imagine what they're going to use that to do. By the, mm -hmm. by the end of June, they each had an entire business already started. Wow. So I think I want to do that. That's something I want to do every year. And yeah, something that's I want to keep building on. Yeah. I, I applaud you for that because not many... People are teaching and, you know, you are already, you're teaching, you know, five, six-year-olds, but you're also teaching adults on your blog about money right. and how 
your your experiences with money as well. Now I'm gonna switch it from the kids to the adults because okay. I know on your blog, on your blog you have you know you have a teacher mom and dad. We also talk about money, also talk about real estate and investing and investment income and whatnot. I myself also do those things. So I'm very familiar with the terminologies that we're using. But for the audience, you know, who wants to get into stuff like that, um, we're switching it from kids. Or you can become a kid if you want to, to, to the adult version of this um, episode. You know, how do we get into the aspect of that? Can you share a little bit um, about your experiences? Yes. So here's how I started, because I want to make it relatable to people who haven't started yet. And they're thinking about like, well, what's the first step that I can take? Well, fresh out of college, I got my first job in New York, making about 50 something thousand a year. Now, mm -hmm. for anyone who's from New York, you know that, meh, you could barely live off that here. Exactly. But you have to make it work for you. Whatever money you're getting, you have to make it work for you. So yes. making a, a very tight budget and living below your means is very important to, to start, to actually start building wealth. Because borrowing money at that early stage, people won't trust you. They're like, well, have you borrowed money before and paid it back? Why should I give you my money? You know? So I think to, and, and the easiest way to start off is to set up a budget mm -hmm. and save every month as much as you can until you have a good lump sum of cash to mm -hmm. put down as a down payment on your next venture. So mm -hmm. in my experience, I knew that my take-home paycheck was about $1,200. Mm -hmm. And this is before my student loans kicked in. I was in my grace period. <laughs> <laughs> That's my take was about $1,200. I paid $500 for rent, my, yeah. my little one bedroom. So mm -hmm. that leaves me $700, right? Yeah. I put the extra $500 in my savings account. So I'm living on $200 a month. Mm -hmm. People might say, well, how do you live off $200 a month? Well, I don't buy anything I don't need. Exactly. And I, I, eat, I eat what my mom cooks, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. So even sometimes that same $200 that that's in my checking account i'm also saving that because i end up spending little to nothing mm -hmm. on a monthly basis so yeah. that's the type of mindset you have to put yourself in by the and end of that mm -hmm. by the end of um the first my first year of saving like that i had ten thousand dollars cash in saving i was like oh this looks good i'm gonna do it again yeah. the next year i yeah. did the exact same thing the following year now i have twenty thousand that's enough to put down about 20% on a, on a $100,000 house. Wow. So I went out and I looked for a house that's between 100000 and 150000 mm -hmm. Anywhere. I know it can be New York. So I'm looking at places with a, a yes. low, <laughs> yes. low cost of living and low <laughs> like I, know, I know it can't be New York. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> so, you never know one day. <laughs> but and that's another I thing know. I want people to know. You don't have to invest where you live this no a, you don't this is a huge country in a huge world you can yeah, literally exactly. find something in your budget anywhere in this world exactly that's yeah. very true so and that's how i got my first rental property i went out mm -hmm. uh, i got a realtor i called up a realtor they called me back and i was like look find me a house between 100 and 150 thousand mm -hmm. i flew out to go look at them i found something for 130 i said perfect i'm buying it that was that then mm -hmm. i decided to repeat this process again Mm -hmm. I said, I'm going to save $10,000 a year. Mm -hmm. Again, I saved about $30,000 the next time. Because mm -hmm. now I'm making more money, right? So yeah. I saved $30,000 the next time. And I bought a cash property in South Africa. Just a one-bedroom wow. apartment. Right. So because the houses there were cheaper. Wow. So my yeah. advice to people, exactly you take what that. you have and find something in your budget. And yeah, get that. that's another rental property. That's additional yeah. income coming in. And that, yeah. That is, that is really great. That I, I'm, you know, listening to this and, you know, um, it, it, I just love when people are finding ways to improve themselves, you know, both financially and, you know, in terms of spirituality, prosperity, and just positivity, 
because um you know i love what you're about and i love that you also you know, as I, that's why i put global entrepreneur because yeah i didn't even know about the property but that word came to me global entrepreneur yeah. entrepreneur and i was like i didn't even know she bought a property in south africa i think i know about the one in i think in in florida or something yeah. as i recall but i didn't know about south africa so kudos to you for doing that Thank now you. um talking about south africa that good that you brought that up can you also talk about the um, nonprofit organization that you found, um, you know, basketball camp. I'm so happy to be a, you know, a part of that yes. and able to help as much as I can. And, um, you know, it's so great what you're doing for the, the kids out there and, and what, what, you know, creating these events every December. So are you doing this that year? Are you doing this this year? I no, mean, they're not allowed to gather yet because of the pandemic. Okay. So they That's weren't what able I was to have the tournament. Okay. So 2021. Hopefully. Yes. Okay. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. So for everyone who's watching, I had a partnership with a basketball club in South Africa to have a one day tournament every year. And the point of having that tournament is to raise money to help more students get to college. So there are a lot of student athletes in South Africa, Cape Town in particular, who have the skills, they have the smarts, but they just need that additional financial push to yes. start mm -hmm. college and, and mm -hmm. then stay in college. So in the tournament, only high school teams are invited to participate. We have about eight teams a year that come. Mm -hmm. And wow. the, the MVP gets a scholarship. Yes. And then I have the coach identify a student with financial need, they get a scholarship. So we give about four scholarships every year. And that money comes from donors like you, Terry, and other people, other people, some of my friends and family that um, donate to um, basketball camp. Oh, wow. And recently, I started another social group called Teachers Group International. And Teachers Group International puts on events annually. And the money that we earn from the events, from ticket sales, we donate all of that to CAMP. Wow. And so teachers group is giving to um, CAMP so that CAMP can give scholarships to students. That's great. Wow. I mean, that's awesome. You, you, you just have to be like, oh my gosh, this, this girl is doing a lot out here. And then you just have a newborn. Yes. <laughs> but don't give me just join this cutest little baby that was just here earlier. What's her name? I'm sorry. Her name is Nuri. Nuri. Yeah. She's, so She's one now. She's one now. Yes. Wow. It just seems like the other day. I know, right? <laughs> and now she's one. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Wow. So is there anything you want to share with the audience, you know, um, if they need to reach out, like, even to donate to, like, Camp SA or anything like that? How, do, how, do, how can they reach out to you? Or, yes. you know, visit your vlog, teacher, mom, and dad, which I didn't touch too much on. And I feel like I need to ask about that. <laughs> You both of you are so adorable. <laughs> You're oh, so you. adorable. <laughs> I, I remember you were doing I think there was one episode I was watching when you were doing your hair and you were just going fast and then he walks in and you just like look at me. <laughs> he liked the video about my videos. I don't know why. <laughs> Oh boy, and it's just it's just funny, and, and and it's you know, and you're learning something in the process. You guys share your experience, and you're both teachers, correct? Yes, he he teaches so the same school. Mom and dad, that's what it's called. Yes, yeah. So that's that's really awesome. That's yeah. I'm glad you found your person. You guys seem so like connected and in tune. So that's yeah. good. <laughs> you're right. You're right. <laughs> I'm sure he's doing this mid right. I don't know if you can hear me. He's in the room. <laughs> <laughs> all righty all right so please share with everyone you know how they can reach you and whatnot um, okay so in order if you want to donate to the basketball camp there's a venmo called camp sa c-a-m-p-s-a that's the venmo and then teachers group international has a cash app which is dollar sign t-g-i group and teachers group international's instagram is at t-g-i corp so T-G-I-C-O-R-P. Mm -hmm. And my personal um, Instagram, me and Greg's Instagram is at teacher mom and dad, the one I'm using now. Yeah. Um, you could visit the website, the Teachers Group International website, 
teachersgroupint.com or the camp website, which is campsa.org. Okay. So, yeah, those are the way. The easiest way is the Cash App. I know everybody now has Cash App these days. So to donate um, scholarship money to these students is TGI Group. Okay, for scholarships, right? Yes. Or you can email us. You can e email us at teachersgroupint at gmail.com. Okay. Or you can email teachermomanddad at gmail.com. We're reachable every way possible. <laughs> Great. I'm telling you, everyone, um, you should definitely donate. I've been donating, I think, for the past two years. Two yes. Years. You remember, I know I started this a while back. <laughs> Just, I, I think and, more and, than two years. It's more than two years? Yeah. Wow. And um, so uh, we have about, I think, around 10 students who've already received scholarships. Great. Great. Yeah, we want to keep that momentum going. Yeah, and you can have a scholarship created in your name if you choose. Um, I'm probably going to switch my name and just put it into TS Inspires because it's a collective group of everybody. So that would be yes. awesome. And I'm I, I, one day I'll visit South Africa. I you know you know. You know with us. <laughs> can I tell you something? You know, I I want to share with you the real reason why I, I I I I'm nervous about coming to South Africa. It's not only because my schedule always in it always interrupts my schedule, but I'm afraid of Black Mambas. I think I watch too much Nat Geo. Black Mamba? <laughs> I've never seen on or heard of on it. Okay. So, <laughs> when I hear South Africa. I think I watched too much Nat Geo. I'm <laughs> thinking about the Black Mamba. Listen, it's very, it's very, it's very city like. It looks okay. just like like LA okay. or New York. I'm just so gonna come out there and say that. In addition to my conflict of schedule, <laughs> there's the Black Mamba fears. You should definitely come on so, out, man. Yeah, I, I would definitely come out. I think I've gotten over that fear. That was a long time ago, but, you know, I, it's, it's for a good cause. And I definitely want to support that moving forward um, more full on. And, and not. So thank you so much, Chantel, for, you know, taking this time out and just, you know, speaking your truth and just being a light to others. And so much knowledge, not only for the five, six-year-olds, but for us adults about how to build wealth. And how to, you know, continue moving forward, despite of whatever may be happening with the pandemic. You can still build wealth during this pandemic. You yes. can. So you have to be able to use what you have in the moment and turn it into opportunity. Absolutely. So, and Chantel and is a prime watching, example of that. Huh? Please, for everyone who's watching, they can reach out to me for any advice. I'm all about helping us, helping each other. So reach out mm -hmm. for advice, financial advice, or educational advice. If you have students at home, nephews nieces and they need academic help reach out great thank you chantel take thank care thank you so much for having me bye bye, bye everyone bye little cutie nori she's so bye -bye. running in the bathroom <laughs> bye, -bye. bye bye oh wow what a very informative and powerful episode yet again i'm so i'm just so always in awe about different creatives that I have here on the show because they're always teaching me something and I'm always open and I thank you everyone for joining in um I thank you so much for you know staying in tune and listening to some of the advice and reach out to Chantel um uh, about how, the ways that we can create wealth not only for our kids but for ourselves and so thank you and have a wonderful wonderful Sunday bye